Yeah, so I'm here to present uh, a paper I wrote with a number of colleagues uh, titled Remote Image Capturing with Low Cost and Low Power Wireless Camera Notes. And in principle, what that is about is um, using camera systems as a measurement system in uh, cost sensitive applications. Um, so this will be rather a high level overview. So if you have some detailed questions, feel free to ask afterwards or look at the paper. Um, Yes. Okay, so a little bit of background. So what is, the whole thing is about is, well, as I said, using cameras as measurement systems. So of course, cameras itself are already sensors, but uh, you can, of course, use cameras for different type of activities. I mean, everyone uses cameras to capture, for example, some kind of images uh, just for personal memories or something like that. Or if you're bored, you can run around in this building and try to count the number of cameras that you can see for surveillance. Uh, it's actually quite many. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is uh, cameras as measurement instruments. And, and in principle, uh, that works in this format, no matter in what kind of technology you are using. Well, you have, of course, at some point, uh, image capture with your camera, um, which gives you uh, quite a lot of information, maybe more information that you actually need or more information that you want to measure. So in order to get actually the information that you want to extract from this multidimensional data, you perform some kind of image processing. Um, and this, in principle, this whole thing is not very new. So that has been done since cameras have been invented. So since kind of the 1800s, um, for example, to look at uh, images to study motion of humans and animals. Um, so what has changed over time is basically how you perform this. So initially, of course, you had some kind of analog cameras uh, which give you some kind of image and you do the image processing by looking at it uh, to get the information. Nowadays, with technology progress, we of course have some other ways to, for example, perform the image processing and the image capturing, which makes the whole thing more efficient and cheaper. So you can actually use it in uh, a number of different applications. So that sounds very good. Um, what is the limitation of that um, if you want to use cameras as measurement systems? Well, what we basically end up with and what I want to talk about is this cost-benefit challenge. Um, so these are all systems that either are or can be used as well, cameras for me as measurement systems. Um, and you can easily see that if you look at these systems, they have very different types of costs. So this is a Hubble telescope which is in some way a camera-based measurement instrument. Uh, and of course, that is very, very expensive. Um, but then it also does something that you can't really do otherwise. So in a way, there's a benefit that you get from this kind of system that in a way is in relation with the cost. So you, you pay a lot of money, but you accept that cost because you get a lot of benefit that you can't get otherwise. Uh, this is what you would maybe see in a, in a certain city environment, so some kind of a safety measure or some traffic measurement. Uh, and of course, that is much, much cheaper than this thing, but it also gives you maybe in a way a little bit lower benefit. So there is a relationship between, well, what you want to pay for your measurement instrument and what kind of benefit it gives you. Uh, so what I basically want to talk about is what happens if you have an application uh, where the benefit is relatively low. There is a benefit or some kind of a value, but uh, it doesn't give you a lot of, um, or it, it doesn't allow you to have a very high cost. So you talk about cost sensitive applications. Uh, so what I will be talking about is, I will use a case study to, to explain a little bit more what I mean uh, with that, with this cost sensitive applications. And I guess everyone knows these kind of systems. So this is a typical water meter uh, type of utility meter at home. Uh, that basically just counts the flow of your water. Uh, could be any other type of utility meter as well. It's just an example. And these things are, of course, designed for visual readout. So what in most situations nowadays happens is you get once per year a reminder of your utility distributor that says, please go to your water meter, read the number, write it on a piece of paper, send us a piece of paper, and then we send you a bill. Um, but of course, I mean, this thing is continuously counting. So in a way, you can extract much more information from that, but most people don't do it because they would actually have to go there. Um, interesting when you look at this application is, well, a single reading of this 
water meter is quite useless in a sense. I mean, you need some kind of a temporal uh, change to actually get some interesting information out of it. Um, so you have a very low value of a single reading, um, but you have some value if you look at maybe larger areas or larger time spans, so spatial temporal information. So if you compare multiple water readers or meters in a city environment, or if you just look over time at one, um, one water meter. And the result of that is that the cost to obtain a single reading must be low because the value of a single reading is very low. Um, so that basically defines how the, how the system, how much the system costs or is allowed to be, allowed to cost. Um, so if you look at this example, this could be a system architecture of such a system. Um, well, you have, of course, your water meter and since I want to talk about cameras as measurement instruments, we will use a camera-based system to actually get that reading and transmit that reading from your water meter. Um, then you have some kind of receiver or processing unit or whatever you want to implement here. There should not be the focus of this talk. And, and that basically gives you, well, it could be a Wi-Fi uh, access point that gives you the data basically to the internet. So from there you can easily distribute it, for example, to the person who owns the re meter to actually get information about his own water consumption, or you can store it in a database, aggregate with multiple readers, and supply it back to the u utility provider. Um, just as a side note, I, I don't really want to talk about this part so much, but this is basically what you would do here. I mean, here you would get the raw image, so uh, image capture and process only, uh, and somewhere here or in the cloud, you would basically do some kind of image processing. So you get the picture. This is the actual, actual picture captured from such a device. Um, you do some basic processing, so edge detection, line detection, rotation, extraction, and then you would use some kind of, for example, case nearest neighbor model or something to match this to an actual number. So a typical OCR um, application. Uh, but what I want to talk about, I don't want to talk so much about this, but about this one. Um, so this is what sits in this box, uh, and, and just as a, si as a size reference, so it's, it's rather small size. Um, so this is a low cost and low power platform. Um, so it's pretty much a sensor node, you could say. Um, so you have a microcontroller, in this case the ARM Cortex M3, just to have it power efficient. Um, you have a low power radio, um, also very standard for a sensor node, so ISM band radio, uh, 802.15.4. Uh, you have, of course, a camera, since it's a camera-based uh, measurement system, and, and here, basically, it has to be as simple as possible to, to get the price down. Uh, so this is a serial JPEG camera, uh, maximum resolution of 640 by 480. Um, and then we have a two-domain power supply um, that basically allows us to shut off components that we don't need if we don't want to do anything and reduce the power consumption to 7 microwatt. Um, during inactivity, so quiet and curt. Uh, there are some LEDs on the back on the back as well. You can't see them now, but they're just for lighting purposes for the image. Okay, so how how does that relate to cost and uh, system cost? And um, well, uh, cost is of course not only the physical cost that you implement, but also the cost that you pay during maintenance. And in our case, that's what low power stands for. So um, battery replacements mainly. Of course, if you want to get this data from your water reader, you don't want to go there every second week or something and change a battery. Then you could go there yourself and just uh, read out the, the number directly. Um, so you want very long lifetimes. Uh, so this is uh, basically all from this system, um, the energy consumption of one active cycle capturing an image. Um, so here you see current, uh, current draw of the system over time during an active cycle. Uh, so these are the typical tasks that you would perform in such a cycle. Well, you, of course, have to start up the camera or the system and the camera. Um, you do the actual image capturing. You do an image readout where you transfer the image from the camera to the microcontroller. Uh, and then you transmit the image and you get some kind of response uh, if you have successfully transmitted the image. Um, interesting when one looks here, or for me personally at least interesting, uh, well, it looks like this part actually the image readout from the camera to the microcontroller is actually one of the biggest contributors 
um, to the power or to the energy consumption. Not the highest power levels, but quite long time and quite high power levels. And this is for an image for 320 by 240. Uh, so a medium quality image from that camera perspective. Um, and that is interesting in that sense because this is actually not something that you, you want to do, but you have to do. Hmm? Great. Uh, this is just a different representation of the same data. So this is basically the percentage distribution of each of these tasks. So these are the same tasks we had before uh, as the distribution, percentage distribution. And then you can see, well, the readout as expected is quite significant. So 62% of all your energy in an active cycle you spend on reading, transferring the image from the camera to the microcontroller. Um, so actually uh, the capturing, which is this part, and the transmission parts is this. So together they're just 25%, and it's actually it's that the things you want to do. Um, so 75% is quite, quite useless, but you still have to do it. Um, so what does that mean? Well, um, if you look at the, uh, at the energy consumption you have uh, in one active cycle, you uh, need 1.5 joule for one active image capture. Um, but then I mentioned before that we have this seven microwatt sleep current. So what happens if you have applications where you can actually accept to take images rather seldomly? Um, well, then you get a lifetime distribution of this or estimation of this. Um, and you can see, well, of course, for, for high sample rate, you have quite short lifetime, but due to this low sleep current, you get quite high lifetimes when you take uh, images rarely. So after approximately one hour, you get to the order of years of lifetime on a battery with a capacity of 1,000 milliamp hours. Okay, just some cl concluding remarks. Um, well, there are a large number of potential applications. There's, this was only one case study, but basically everything where you do visual inspections, uh, where you want to use cameras as an automated way to perform this visual inspection, but you might have some cost constraints. Um, well, we have technology process, uh, progress that allows for systems to actually be of low cost. Um, and system lifetimes of such systems, as we demonstrated, can be of the order of years um, if you get them to operate at low sample rates. Uh, there's, of course, in this system quite a lot of opportunity for optimization of the camera part especially, but uh, most of that optimization would reduce energy consumption uh, the, the, yeah, the time and the energy consumption for an active circle, but cycle, but increase the cost at the same time. Yeah, and with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and we'll ask any questions.